Okay, let me remind you of a few things before we get back to, um, well, we're gonna start uh, chapter 41 today. Um, so remember that we have uh, test number two coming up. Uh, it's gonna be one week from today on Friday, March 19th. Um, that means that uh, the last material that we'll be responsible for will cover on Monday. Uh, Wednesday will be your review session. So I'll get a uh, study guide posted on eCampus probably Monday evening. Uh, as usual, please look over the study guide. Uh, please come to class with, with questions ready. I, I said before, I really don't mind giving you guys a review session as long as uh, people are attending and actually asking questions. Also, uh, quiz number 10 will be posted today. Uh, probably around noon or so, uh, you'll have until um, 11.59 this evening to complete quiz um, 10. Uh, that reminds me, um, remember to study your quizzes for the upcoming test. Remember that I'll take one question off each quiz and put it on the exam. So let's see, we had what, five quizzes before our last test. So I think uh, study quizzes five through 10, because there'll be at least one question from each quiz on test number two. And I think that's about it as far as announcements go. So first thing I wanna do, so we more or less finished up, we more or less finished up uh, chapter 11. On, uh, on Wednesday, uh, but we didn't have time to look at some videos. Uh, these videos are actually pretty amazing. So these are uh, videos of actual cells going through mitosis. And you can, you can actually see each stage, you know, prophase, you can see the chromosomes condensing, um, you know, metaphase, you can see the chromosomes lining up, really cool stuff. So I have two videos to show you. Here's the first one. And I don't think there's, well, that's not helping. I don't think there's sound. So you look at the cell. There's prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. We're in G2. Prophase, this is where you can see the chromosomes start to condense. You might see the nuclear envelope break down as well. Metaphase, all the chromosomes are lined up along the spindle equator now. Anaphase, the sister chromatids move to opposite poles of the cell. Telophase, we can see some you can see them starting to decondense as well. So they're not, uh, we can't see individual chromosomes because they're decondensing. Cytokinesis happening. Really cool videos. I'll post these on eCampus for you too. Now for this one, we're gonna look at, at uh, mitosis. It's a different cell, cell types. Um, one of these animations is the same cell that we looked at, but let's have a look. Well, that was pretty quick, but again, you can see prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Started up pretty much in metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis. This is the same cell that we just looked at. Okay, uh, CD34 positive, these are cells of the immune system. A 
Okay, like I said, I'll post these on eCampus for you if you want to have a look at them later. But oh, it's kind of cool, I think, to see mitosis in like a, a real living cell like that. All right. So today we're going to start animal development. Uh, this is a pretty short PowerPoint. Uh, we might even finish it today. Okay, so an overview of development. So there are seven stages of animal development. Uh, the first is gamete formation. So you may remember from one of the very early lectures that gametes are reproductive cells. And gametes are haploid, meaning that they have half the number, the normal number of chromosomes. Okay, so for example, humans normally have 46 chromosomes. Human gametes have 23 chromosomes. Um, some examples of gametes. So again, if we're talking about animals, um, the male gamete is sperm. Uh, the female gamete is an egg. Uh, if we're talking about plants, the male gamete is pollen, and the female gamete is an ovule. Next step in development is fertilization. So this is when uh, two <laughs> haploid gametes come together uh, to make a diploid cell called a zygote. So in this example, uh, we get uh, a sperm fusing with an egg. Uh, so again, sperm are reproductive cells. They have, they're haploid. Eggs are reproductive cells, they're haploid as well. So when they fuse together, they make a diploid zygote. Okay. Um, next stage is called cleavage. So, and this happens like right after fertilization, right after we get uh, a diploid zygote. Cleavage is a very rapid series of cell divisions. Okay, it, it's so rapid, in fact, that there's no chance for growth in before, before between cell divisions. So we're gonna, this zygote is gonna divide in half and in half and in half again, and the cells are gonna, be, gonna get smaller and smaller with each division because there's no, we're skipping over the growth phases. Okay, so a very rapid series of, of cell divisions, so rapid in fact that there's no time for growth in between divisions. Uh, next is gastrulation. So in gastrulation, this is where the primary tissue layers form. So we're gonna get a, a layer of tissue that's gonna cause, that's gonna form the uh, gastrointestinal tract. We're gonna get a layer of tissue that's gonna form the skin and the nervous system. And we're gonna get another layer of, of, of uh, tissue that's gonna form everything else inside the organism. Okay, so that's gastrulation. Uh, next, we're gonna get organ formation. And finally, growth and tissue specialization. So now let's talk about each of these in a little more detail. So gamete formation is formation of eggs and sperm in reproductive organs. Eggs form in ovaries. Sperm form in testes. Gametes are haploid and form by meiosis. You know, we're not gonna go into meiosis in, in this course. I think if you take biology 112 next semester, um, one of the first things they'll, uh, that uh, you'll cover is meiosis. We're just going to cover mitosis. We're not going to cover meiosis. So male gametes form in testes in animals. Okay? Uh, female gametes form in ovaries, again, in animals. And these are haploid. Now, remember, haploid means having half the normal number of chromosomes.
Okay, so the normal number of chromosomes in humans is 46. Uh, gametes, because they're haploid, have 20, 23 chromosomes. So the normal body cells, what we, we've been calling the somatic cells, uh, divide by mitosis. So we just did a whole chapter on mitosis. So in mitosis, we start with two sets of chromosomes, right? It, it, again, using human cells as, a, as an example, we start with cells that have 46 chromosomes. And by the end of mitosis, we have two cells each that have 46 chromosomes. So this is what we call conservative division. So in conservative division, conservative division, we start with two sets of chromosomes. We end with two sets of chromosomes. Uh, we start with a, a diploid cell. Uh, we end with two diploid cells. Uh, and if we're talking in terms of human cells, we start with a cell that has 46 chromosomes and we end with two cells that each have 46 chromosomes. Okay, that's conservative division. Now, in the case of meiosis, meiosis only occurs in reproductive cells. And rather than conservative division, we get reductive division. Uh, so what's that mean? So that, that means we're starting with a cell that has two sets of chromosomes and we're ending with cells that have one set of chromosomes. Uh, in other words, we're starting with a diploid cell and we're ending with haploid cells. And in the case using humans as an example, we're starting with a cell that has 46 chromosomes and we're ending with cells that have 23 chromosomes each. Okay, so half the normal number of cells. Okay, so the next stage of development is fertilization. In fertilization, we get fusion of one haploid male sperm and one haploid female egg to produce one diploid zygote. Okay, and again, this is just in animals. In plants, it would be fusion of a, a male pollen granule with a female ovule to make uh, a diploid zygote. Okay. And when we get fusion of a male gamete and a female gamete to make a, a diploid cell, that diploid cell is called uh, zygote. C Y G O T E, zygote. Okay, so next, after fertilization comes cleavage. And cleavage is a very rapid series of cell divisions. So when a, when a, a zygote gets to the cleavage stage, essentially it's gonna go through a cell division every 30 minutes. It's really, really quick. So cleavage is a series of, of rapid mitotic cell divisions that converts a single cell zygote into a ball of 16 cells or a morula. So if we look over here, so over here we have the, the single cell zygote. After one round of cleavage, we have a two-celled embryo 
uh, another round of cleavage, we end up a four celled embryo, an eight cell. Uh, when it gets to the stage where it's a, a, a solid ball of 16 cells, uh, that's what we refer to as a morula. Okay, a morula, the morula stage is a solid ball of 16 cells. All right. Of course, that solid ball of 16 cells is going to continue to divide uh, until we get to the next stage, which is gastrulation. Okay, so in gastrulation, uh, the number of cells in the morula can, can increases by mitosis. And eventually, that's going to form a hollow ball of cells. The hollow ball of cells is called a blastula. Okay, so this is a blastula. The center of the blastula, the, the fluid filled space, is called the blastocele. Okay, so this is one of those words that has kind of a funny pronunci pronunciation when you look at how it's spelled. Okay, so the blastula is here. In the center of this fluid-filled space, this is called a blastocele. B-L-A-S-T-O-C-O-E-L. -O -O -E okay, and I'm gonna move over to the whiteboard for a little bit. All right. Okay, so let's draw a, a blastula here. Okay, so this is a blastula, or of course a blastula is a hollow ball of cells. Uh, in the center, we have this fluid-filled space. The fluid-filled space is the blastocele. And at the beginning of the gastrulation, there's going to be a, a little indentation in part of the blastula. Uh, this little indentation is called a blastopore. Now that blastopore, cells are going to keep migrating into that blastopore, and it's going to get deeper and deeper until the blastopore has gone almost all the way across the blastocele. Okay, so, so the opening here is still, this is still the blast of four. And uh, this structure that's made by the cells migrating into the blast of four, uh, into the blast of seal, this whole thing here, this is called the arc enteron.
All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint for a little bit. Okay, so what happens is, uh, this is what happens during blast, uh, gastrulation. So cells uh, migrate into the blastopore uh, until they go almost all the way across and they uh, form this arc enteron. Um, then also some cells migrate into the blastopore, these red ones here, here, and here. Let's go back to the board. Okay, so we're gonna get some cells migrating into the blastocele here, here, and here. Okay, so at this stage, this is no longer called a blastula. We refer to this as a, a gastrula. Okay, so now we're at the gastrula stage. And an important thing about the gastrula stage is that the, at the gastrula stage, we form three primary tissue layers. Okay, so the three primary tissue layers are ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. Oops, I forgot to. No, I'm okay. okay. Ectoderm is going to become the skin and nervous system. Endoderm is going to become the digestive tract and digestive organs. And mesoderm is going to become everything else. Okay, so mesoderm is going to become um, the skeletal system, uh, the muscles, uh, reproductive system, urinary system, everything else comes from mesoderm. Okay. So looking back at my drawing of the gastrula, this layer of cells on the outside, this is the ectoderm. This is going to become the skin and nervous system. These cells that migrate into the middle, here, here, and here, these are mesoderm. This is what's gonna become the uh, reproductive system, the muscles, the uh, skeletal system, the urinary system, everything else. And um, the archenteron, the, the structure that's, uh, that's on the inside, Archenteron, this is the endoderm. Okay, and again, the endoderm is going to become the digestive tract and all of the organs that are involved in digestion. So that includes the pancreas, uh, the liver, the gallbladder, large intestine, small intestine, all of that comes from uh, endoderm.
All right. Um, so I have a video that I have not posted on eCampus yet. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, here it is. Okay, so before I play this video for you, let me pop this out so we can see it a little better. Where am I start helping me get? There we go. Okay, so before I play this video for you, there's a couple things I want you to look for. Um, first of all, we're going to see gastrulation. So when gastrulation happens, we're going to see cells migrating into the archenteron. Um, and and it's, it's shown pretty well here, so look for that. Another thing, I'm, we haven't talked about this yet, but one thing that's really cool that I want you to look for is uh, formation of the neural groove and the spinal column. So what you're going to see is you're going to see the frog embryo and like down the, the length of the frog embryo, you're gonna see like a, a little indentation and these two flaps. Okay, that, that indentation is called the neural groove and the two flaps are called neural folds. So, and what happens is that the neural folds are gonna fold over and, and zip up pretty much down, down the, the length of the embryo in order to form the, the spinal column. So re remember that the ectoderm forms the skin, but it also forms the nervous system, right? So, and we, we can see pretty clearly uh, in this video how ectoderm forms the spinal column and then migrates some in, into the, uh, the embryo. So look for that too. Okay, so we're at the cleavage stage right now. relation. Okay, now you're going to see the neural groove and the neural folds forming here. So neural groove here, neural folds here and here. And that forms the spinal cord right there. That's pretty cool. So another thing I wanted to mention about that, so did you notice when the cell was undergoing cleavage and we had this very rapid series of, of, of cell divisions that the cells just got smaller each time and the, over, the overall size of the embryo didn't change. Okay? That's, be, that's because during cleavage, the divisions are so rapid that there's no time for cell growth in between. So the overall size of the embryo stays the same and the individual cells just keep getting smaller and smaller. Okay, now eventually when cleavage ends, there's gonna be a growth. 
the, the, you know, G1 and G2 where we get some growth, we're, we're going to get some growth in there and, um, and the whole, the size of the embryo can get bigger. Okay, so organ formation. So I already introduced you to ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. So at the end of gastrulation, when we have a mature gastrula, we have the, the three primary tissue layers or the three embryonic tissue types. Ectoderm, the outer layer of cells, which are gonna form the skin and the nervous system. Endoderm, uh, the inner layer of cells, that, that structure that I call the arc enteron, makes up the, the, the uh, endoderm. Uh, this is going to become the lining of the gut and the digestive organs. Uh, mesoderm, the middle layer of cells. So those are the cells that uh, migrated into what used to be the blast seal. Um, this is the middle layer of cells that arises later from cells which bud from the endoderm. Uh, this is going to become muscles, skeleton, circulatory system, urinary system, reproductive systems, basically everything else uh, besides the, uh, the skin, nervous system, digestive organs or lining of the gut. Okay, uh, now let's talk about organ formation. So the blastopore, re remember this part here? Okay, so the, the, the little hole that forms in the blastula during gastrulation, this is the blastopore. Okay, and even after we get a mature gastrula over here, we still have, this is still the blastopore right here. So from here, depending on, on how the organism evolved, uh, there's, there's two ways we could go. Uh, the blastopore can either become the mouth of the organism or it could become the anus. Um, in protostomes, the blastopore becomes the mouth. So we're talking about animals like uh, worms, mollusks. So mollusks, mollusks will include uh, soft-bodied animals like uh, uh, squid, um, clams, uh, snails, those types of animals. Uh, arthropods, arthropods include both crustaceans and insects. Uh, in this case, the blastopore will become the mouth of the organism. Uh, then we have the deuterostomes. Uh, the deuterostomes include chordates. So chordates are basically anything with a spinal cord. Um, frogs and humans are included in that group. In deuterostomes, the blastopore will become the anus. Okay, so we have two ways for things to be, two ways for things to develop from here, depending on what kind of organism we're talking about. Uh, for protostomes the blastopore is going to become the mouth. And for the deuterostomes, the blastopore is going to become the anus. OK, so finally, growth and tissue specialization. So growth and tissue specialization involves four basic processes. Uh, first is my, mitosis and cell growth. So remember during cleavage, the cell divisions were so fast, there was no time for cell growth in between. So the overall size of the embryo stayed the same and the cells just got smaller. Now, of course, we want, we're going to need that embryo to get bigger. So we're going to add cells and we're going to have time for those cells to grow completely before they divide. Uh, second, we're going to get cell differentiation. 
Uh, cell differentiation is formation of cells with specialized shapes and functions through the activation of unique gene combinations. So this is where your brain cells start expressing the proteins that brain cells have and uh, you know, differentiating into, into brain cells. This is where your liver cells start differenti differentiating into liver cells, okay? uh, expressing the proteins that liver cells express, doing the job that uh, liver cells do. Okay? Your bone cells, same thing. So, so each different tissue type is gonna start specializing. Okay? They're gonna start uh, expressing the set of genes that make them the type of cell they are and start doing the job of the type of cell they are. Okay, we, we refer to this as cell differentiation. Finally, well not finally, but thirdly, we're gonna get cell migration. So like we saw with the formation of the spinal column in the frog video, in development where cells start out isn't necessarily where cells are gonna end up in the organism. Okay, so cells migrate to different spots. Um, again, we, we saw that with formation of the spinal column. That's just one example. Uh, there are other situations where the cells have to migrate somewhere from one place to another before they get to where they'll, they'll finally be in the organism. And finally, and this one's kind of, uh, counterintuitive to some students, but we have cell suicide. Um, I don't care for the term cell suicide so much. Um, I prefer uh, programmed cell death. Let me see if I can write without this freaking out on me. And of course I can't, <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and write on the whiteboard then. This is the only, this is the only computer that does that to me. Okay, let's go over to the whiteboard. Okay, so the scientific term for cell suicide or programmed cell death is apoptosis. It's A-P-O-P-T-O-S-I-S. And the definition I prefer for apoptosis is programmed cell death. And like the slide says, this is sometimes referred to as cell suicide, but again, I really don't care for that term as much. So in, in apoptosis or programmed cell death, uh, some cells are going to die out. Okay, and it, it's planned that way. They're actually going to, uh, apoptosis or programmed cell death is very different than cells dying from disease or injury. It, when, when cells die from necrosis, that's from disease or injury, it's a messy affair, right? The insides of the, the cells spill out. Um, we might have release of some uh, like pro-inflammatory cytokines, so we, we might get inflammation. Um, it's very messy. When cells die by programmed cell death or apoptosis, they're just going to fold up in a very neat and orderly manner and, and just kind of die. And then what's left over, uh, phagocytic cells like macrophages can come by and consume what's left over of those cells and then recycle the, uh, the contents of that cell uh, to make new cells. Okay, so four basic processes for um, growth and tissue specialization, mitosis and cell growth. Again, so this embryo has to grow bigger. So we're gonna add more cells. We're gonna allow those cells to, 
fully drilled before between divisions. Uh, cell differentiation. So this is when different cell types uh, become different cell types. This is where your liver cells become liver cells, your brain cells become brain cells, bone cells become bone cells. Cell migration, so your cells are gonna move uh, during development to different parts. And finally, uh, apoptosis or uh, programmed cell death is gonna happen as well. Okay, so here's a good example of where we would see uh, programmed cell death or apoptosis. So uh, this little alien looking creature here is actually a human embryo. And if we zoom in on the developing hand, you can see it really looks a lot more like a paddle than it looks like a hand, right? So the way the human hand forms is for, first, we get this little, little flipper-like thing. And then all of the cells in between, in the webs in between the fingers are gonna die off by apoptosis, by programmed cell death, okay? And then finally, after that happens, you're gonna see a structure with five fingers that looks a whole lot more like a hand. Okay, so again, here we have the little flipper thing. Um, and here you can see this webbing in between. This is gonna die off by apoptosis. After that dies off by apoptosis, then we have a structure that looks much more like a hand. Okay? And again, this is a natural process. Uh, it's natural for cells to die off like this in order to form certain structures like, like the human hand. All right, so I told you guys this was a, a short one and we'd probably finish today. I didn't think we'd finish quite as early as this. Um, however, I haven't posted the next PowerPoint yet. So um, why don't we just end here for today? Um, question. Uh, can you make a discussion board for students who want to participate in a possible study group via the discussion board? That would anybody who, yeah, sure, I could do that. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll do that and I'll put an announcement on eCampus for anybody who wants to, to participate. Um, any other questions? Okay, I don't see any questions from the class, but there's no more questions from Zoom. Oh, here's another question from Zoom. I have a question about old quizzes. I looked at the February 6th announcement, but still cannot access them. Um, well, I, I might have to talk to you about that. Uh, everybody, in order to look at your old quizzes, there's an announcement on eCampus I posted February 6th. Um, let me think how you do it. So. You, you, you should be able to go in, just click on the quiz like you're going to take it. Um, that'll take you to a screen uh, that shows you your score. Now, your score should be a blue number between zero and five. That blue number is actually a link. When you click on that score, it should take you to the answers so that you can actually view them. Okay, so see if that works for you. Um, any other questions? All right, if there's no other questions, remember uh, I'll have quiz number 10 online by about noon today. Um, remember uh, test number two is uh, a week from today, Friday. So if there's nothing else, I'm gonna stop the meeting here and you guys have a good weekend. I'll see you next week. <laughs>